10.1c significant tests for difference of proportion. Q1 minus PQ. So we did confidence intervals, and now we're going to do significance tests for two proportions. So, hungry children. Researchers designed a survey to compare the proportions of children who come to school without eating breakfast in two low-income elementary schools. A simple random sample of 80 students from school one found that 19 had not eaten breakfast. At school two, a simple random sample of 150 students included 26 who had not had breakfast. There are more than 1,500 students at each school. Uh, so does the data give convincing evidence of a difference in the population proportions? So state the appropriate hypotheses for a test. We're going to do a significance test to answer the question and, of course, define the parameters that you're going to use. All right, so when you do your hypothesis, we're comparing. Our null hypothesis would be that the difference between the two is zero, so there's no difference. And our alternate hypothesis, for this one, it's just that there is a difference, right? So does not equal zero. And of course, define your parameters. P1 is the true proportion of students at school one who did not have breakfast, and P2 is the true proportion of students at school two who did not have breakfast. Um, so we have to check our conditions, right? So we just did the state part, and then for the plan part, we're going to state the test we use and then check conditions. So the test is called a two sample z test for proportions or difference of proportions. And now we're going to check random, same thing as confidence intervals, you guys. Um, so two independent random samples, and then our 10% rule, you have to check for both populations, so for both schools, and then large counts, you're checking all four of them, so n times p greater than or equal to 10, n times 1 minus p greater than or equal to 10 for both populations. All right, so our test statistic is the statistic minus the parameter divided by the standard deviation. Um, so we're finding a z-score because we're doing proportions. And our statistic is going to be when we subtract our p hat, so our sample proportions, and we're subtracting zero. Our parameter is zero because we're saying there's no difference in our null hypothesis. And our standard deviation has a formula that is similar but slightly different to confidence intervals. So um, here we have our standard deviation of the difference of our p hat. So this is what we used for confidence intervals, right? We use separate P1s and P2s and N1s and N2s, and we added them together. So for a significance test for difference of proportions, we use what's called P combined. So P hat of C, where we add our Xs and we add our Ns. This should be a two, all right? So this is called combined and you will use it for both. So the formula that you want to write down for the standard deviation is the square root of P combined times one minus P combined, and these all have hats because we're combining our samples, divided by N1, we still use separate ends, and we use the same thing here, 1 minus P combined divided by N2. Whoops, N2. You might also hear this called pooled. Again, we're adding them together. So let's try one. Significance test for P1 minus P2. Researchers designed a survey to compare the proportions of children, so same thing. Uh, this time we're going to do, um, do these data give convincing evidence that at the 0.05 significance level uh, in the population proportions, if there's a difference. All right, so our test name is called a two sample, and you should write this down, z-test for difference of proportions for P1 minus P2. So do we have a random sample? Yeah, it says we have independent random samples in the problem. Our 10% rule, we've got 19 out of 80. So 
we're taking a sample size of 80. And if I multiply that by 10, I get 800. And is that bigger than the number of students at school one? We have to have at least 800 students at that school. And then we've got 150 at the other one we did a sample of times 10. That gives us 1,500. So we have to have a, 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 at least 1,500 students at school two. And it says more than 1,500 students attend at each school. So we've got our 10% rule. Large counts, we're going to check n times p. So 80. And we got 19 of those 80 who had not had breakfast. That's n times p. n times 1 minus p would be 61 over 80. Let me multiply. Notice that these just cancel out. That's really nice. So I get 19. These cancel out. I get 61. And then at the other school, we had 150 and 26 who had not had breakfast. So 150 times 26 out of 150. And the 1 minus would be 124 out of 150. And of course, those cancel. That's nice. I get 26 here. Those cancel, and I get 124. We are checking, are these all greater than or equal to 10? <clears throat> and they are. All right. So our do part, we need our separate p hats first. So I have 19 out of 80, and I got 26 out of 150. And we're going to find the difference. in these two um, proportions. So I'm going to do 0 0.2375 minus 0 0.1733 is 0 0.0642. And now we're going to find our z-score. So our z-score is the difference in these, so this minus this, which was 0 0.0642, minus the parameter, which is 0. We assume there's no difference divided by our standard deviation. And this is where we have something new, and we have to calculate PC off to the side here. So P hat C, so our pooled proportions. That means I'm going to do 19 plus 26, so this plus this, over this plus this, 80 plus 150. That gives me 45 over 230, which is 0.1957. And that's what we're going to use for both of our P's, PC. So 0.1957 times 1 minus 0.1957 divided by your first N, which is 80. Same thing over here for our PC. Only this time we're dividing by our second end of 150. All right, when we calculate this, we get a z-score of 1.17. Now, remember, we're doing a difference of proportions. So we've got our two-tailed, uh, if we were to graph this, right, we're looking for negative 1.17 and over, and positive 1.17 and over. So for our p-values, we've got normal CDF. I'll do the negative side. Whoops. Lower bound, negative 1,000. Upper bound, negative 1.17. Mean of 0, standard deviation of 1. Okay, that gives me 0.121, but we need to multiply by 2 since it's two-tailed. And so that gives me a proportion. If I have this plus this, we get 0.242 for the area under the curve here, 24%. So is that smaller than 5%? No. So we have our conclusion because our p-value is 0.242, which is greater than alpha. We failed to reject the null. We do not have convincing evidence that the true proportion of students at the two schools who didn't eat breakfast are different. All right, so of course our calculator can help us out. So write down your directions for significance tests for difference in proportions. 
menu, statistics, stat test, two proportions, D test. Just a reminder that X1 and X2 are integers. Don't put in decimals. I know we're doing proportions, but you do X and N so that it becomes a fraction afterwards. Um, just a reminder, too, that this guy right here, the two sample Z test, is for comparing means when we know the population standard deviation. All right? So look for proportions when you're doing proportions. And let's try um, this one that we just did on our calculators. So menu, statistics, stat test. And we're going to go to two proportion Z test. All right, so X1, we had 19 out of 80 who did not have breakfast. And for the other one, we have 26 out of 150. And we're looking for if there's a difference. So this guy. And they give us our Z-score. Notice the p-value is already doubled, so you don't need to double it. They do it for you when you plug it into your calculator and you say no difference. All right, so inference for experiments, just a reminder, this kind of comes back to Chapter 4, that most experiments on people use recruited volunteers as subjects. When subjects are not randomly selected, remember that researchers cannot generalize the results of an experiment to a larger population of interest. Um, however, we can draw cause and effect conclusions, but only people who are like those who took part in the experiment. Okay, another thing to note, unless the experimental units are randomly selected, we don't need to check the 10% condition when performing inference about an experiment. So let's try one. So here we have an experiment instead of a sample. Um, high levels of cholesterol in the blood are associated with higher risk of heart attack. Will using a drug to lower blood pressure, or sorry, to lower blood cholesterol reduce heart attacks? The Holinsky Heart Study recruited middle-aged men with high cholesterol but no history of other serious medical problems to investigate this question. The volunteer subjects were assigned at random to one of two treatments. So we have 2,051 men who took the drug gemfibrozole to reduce their cholesterol levels. And then we had a control group of 2,030 men who took a placebo. <clears throat> During the next five years, 56 men in the gemfibrozole group and 84 men in the placebo group had heart attacks. Is this difference statistically significant at the 1% level? All right, so state, we hope to show that Jim Fribazol reduces heart attack. So we have a one-sided alternate hypothesis. So for our null hypothesis, we're looking for a difference of zero. And remember, no hats on these, just P's. And our alternate hypothesis, we want to find a difference. And so if my P1 is the actual heart attack rate for middle-aged men, like the ones in the study who take gemfibrozole, and the P2 is the ones who take the placebo, then I want to have less than zero for my difference. And we're going to use the 1% significance level. All right, of course, our plan. So what test are we doing? Uh, this is called a two-proportion z-test. And do we have random samples? Yep, we had two groups of a randomized experiment. All right, we don't have to check the 10% condition on this one because we had random assignments. Um, and we do need to check large counts, though. So we had 56 people. And the other number that we get is we subtract. So we have 2,051 minus 56. And that gives me 1,995. And for our other group, we had 84 
we pick the placebo, and we subtract 2,030 minus 84, and that gives me 1,946. All of these are greater than or equal to 10, so we're good to go. And we can do the do part. All right. So our two different p-values, p1, we had 56 who had a heart attack out of 2,051. So 0 0.0273. Our p2 was 84 who had a heart attack out of 2,030. That's 0 0.0414. And we have to find pools because we're doing a significance test, which means we're going to add 56 and 84 in the numerator and 2051 and 2030 in the denominator, which gives me 0 0.0343, which we'll use in our test statistic Z. All right, so for our Z, So for our Z, we want the difference of this minus this, which is negative 0 0.0141 minus 0 divided by standard deviation, where we're going to use pooled 0 0.0343, 1 minus 0 0.0343 divided by my first N. 2051 plus my pooled again, same thing, divided by the other end, 2030. And we'll check that on our calculator in a moment. And same with our p value. So let's plug this into our calculator. Menu, statistics, stat test, and we're looking for a two proportion z test. All right, so X1, we have 56 out of 2051. X2 is 84 out of 2030. And we're looking for the P1s have less heart attacks than the P2s, the people who took the drug have less. All right, so I got my Z-score negative 2.47. And our normal CDF, or our p-value, which our calculator tells us, 0 0.0067. 0 0.0067. And so our conclusion, our p-value is small. It's less than 1%, so we can reject a null. The results are statistically significant at the 1% level, so there is convincing evidence of a lower heart attack heart attack rate for middle-aged men like the ones in the study who take gemfibrozole uh, than for those who take a placebo.